Files you'll need to install Ubuntu are commonly assembled into a package called an ISO image. ISO images are packaged in a way that they would be if they were put onto an optical disc such as a CD, DVD, or Blu-ray. ISO stands for International Standards Organization. It's the body that comes up with all kinds of standards, including the file system format for optical discs. That's ISO 9660 in case you're remotely interested. It may also contain other files commonly used by DVDs and Blu-ray discs. The nice thing about an operating system that has been packaged in such a way is that you can boot to it and install the operating system from it. Another nice thing about ISO images is that they do not have to be put onto an optical disc to be usable. You can fool your computer into believing it's loading from an optical disc when it's actually loading from the downloaded image file directly or from a USB device. To download the image, go to www.ubuntu.com slash server slash download. Click on the big download link for the latest version of long-term support or LTS Ubuntu server. As I write this, it's 18.04.1, but when you download it, it may be 18.04. something. Or if you download after April of 2020, it'll be 20.04. something. And it's downloading a file called Ubuntu 18.04.1.0 live server amd 64iso This CR download will go away when the download is complete. It's downloading it to my downloads folder. This behavior should be similar whatever operating system you're using, just make sure you know where the downloads go when you normally download things. The image is fairly large. It's about 812 megabytes, so it may take quite a while to download depending on your internet speed. Over an hour for my horrible internet connection. Be patient and let the download complete. You'll then have the ISO file this lesson, we'll do an Ubuntu Server 18.04 installation on VirtualBox. Ubuntu 18 was released in April of 2018, and it'll be valid until the year 2020, April of 2020. In the previous lesson, you downloaded the latest Ubuntu Server 18.04 long-term support ISO file. In this lesson, you'll use that to create a server virtual machine you'll use throughout the course. To begin, open VirtualBox, then click on New. Create a name for your server and select Linux for the type and Ubuntu 64-bit for the version. Click on Continue. Leave the memory size at the default of 1024 megabytes here and click on Continue. Leave Create a Virtual Hard Disk Now selected and click on Create. Leave VDI VirtualBox Disk Image selected and click on Continue. For storage on physical hard disk, Leave Dynamically Allocated selected and click on Continue. Leave File Location and Size at default unless you have to store in another location and click on Create. Your server VM is created and waiting for you to install Ubuntu Server on it. Right click on your new server and select Settings. Click on Storage. Under Controller IDE, click on the empty CD DVD icon. To the right, next to IDE Secondary Master, click on the disk icon and select your disk image. If it doesn't show up there, you'll have to browse to it by clicking Choose Optical Disk File and finding your downloaded image. If you don't already have it downloaded, you can pause here download it from ubuntu.com slash download 
and then continue with the lesson. Click on OK. Double click on your server VM to start it. Keep English selected or select your language by scrolling up or down using the arrow keys and then hit enter. Under keyboard configuration, leave English selected or select your language and then hit enter. Leave install Ubuntu selected and hit enter to continue. Leave the network connections at default and hit enter on done. Leave the proxy address blank and hit enter on done. Leave use entire disk selected and hit enter. Leave the default value and choose the disk to install to and hit enter to continue. Leave done selected for file system setup and hit enter to continue. Hit the down arrow under confirm destructive action to select continue and hit enter. Enter your name, hit tab, enter your server's name, hit tab, and continue down the form. Be sure you enter your password, then enter the same password to confirm it again during that step. When you get done at the bottom of the form, hit enter to continue. Software installation will commence based on the settings you specified earlier. Once the installation completes, hit enter with reboot now selected to reboot to your newly installed OS. When the text finishes scrolling, hit enter after please remove the installation medium. Log in with the username and password you supplied earlier. My first step upon installing a new server is to update the server. Here's a one-liner that will do that for you. Type sudo apt update ampersand ampersand that's the and sign it's above the seven key on most keyboards then sudo apt upgrade minus y the minus y will answer yes to any questions it would have asked you during that step ampersand ampersand again then sudo apt full dash upgrade minus y and hit enter You'll be prompted for your password to run the command with sudo privileges, which will be covered in greater detail later in the course. You'll usually have to remove old kernel versions after an update, so I run sudo apt auto remove if needed after the updates.